Hello everyone, welcome back to another Art of Spotlight from Clay County Historical and Arts Council. Tess Thomas with you today, and we are at the home of Jenny Urani. Take us down to her studio. Look at how idyllic. Oh, what a gorgeous place. I love it. What a nice place. Look at this view, you guys. Just beautiful. Miss Jenny, I want to thank you for having us today. Oh. We're going to come inside and we're going to do a little question and answer session and then we'll have you tell us a little bit about your art, okay? Great. Come on in. Welcome. And so now we're inside Miss Jenny's studio in this idyllic little studio in the woods. It's a beautiful ride up here. Um, Miss Jenny, again, thank you for having us today and taking the time to let us come in and, you know, see all your artwork. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, where are you from and how long have you been in this area? Sure. I was actually born in Canton, Georgia. In Georgia. In Georgia. And my family, my mother's side of the family, is from right here, from actually over around Turtle Town. So, I moved with my granny over around Turtle Town with no running water oh. <laughs> back in the early 50s. Wow. And then my mother moved to Wichita, Kansas when I was 10. So I lived in Wichita um, and then moved to Kansas City, Missouri when I was 19 and I, I spent all my adult life there. Um, but this was always home sure, because we had family here and I love these mountains and Absolutely. I always wanted to come back and live here forever. So in, two, in 1999 I married John Urani from St. Louis who had never been to this part of the country. And I brought him down to meet the family, and he said, I want to live there. Oh, yeah. So I said, really? <laughs> you you like, yeah. sure about this? You know, he did. And so we moved down. We and moved here. About this beautiful home. Yeah, first we had a place on the river, on the Notley River. John's a fly fisherman, so he could walk outside and into the river. But then we met some people from here, and this place wasn't even for sale. Really? So you really got in there. What got you started in art? Well, I'm one of those people that I was, as a child, I remember being really happy making marks on paper. That made me happy to do that. I didn't know it was art, but that's what I did. Right. And so I, I always liked to draw or paint. And then, uh, but then as I got older, when I was in my, probably in my teens, I I discovered what an artist is, and I wanted to be an artist, and I wanted to go to art school. Um, I didn't have money to go to art school, but Hallmark Cards is in Kansas City, Missouri, and they had an ad in the Wichita paper for artists, uh, and you had free tuition to the Kansas City Art Institute. So I was 18. I took my high school and one semester college portfolio and interviewed and a month after my 19th birthday, I went to work for Hallmark Cards as an artist. That is amazing. I have chills. What a great job. Well, it was awful. Oh, <laughs> wait, really? It was, <laughs> it was production art. Oh. Um, so it wasn't creative at all. And oh. Oh, it was very regimented. And I, I wound up staying in the art department for a year. And other people had been fired by them. They just went through artists like bananas or something. Oh, <laughs> wow. And bunches and got rid of them. Oh. So, but they, for some reason, they didn't fire me. They put me in another department. So I was with Hallmark for five years, and, and I had free tuition to the Art Institute. By That's the time. nice, so yeah. I to, so I went to class and then eventually worked there. So I always, I never, other than that brief period, I never worked as an artist. I was always in the corporate world. I worked for IBM for 20 years. Uh, but art was always my heart. And so... I took classes whenever I could paint and draw, I did. And then, of course, when we moved down here and I was retired, then I had more time and the opportunity to do that. Right. When I moved down here, you know, I had been painting off and on for years. I worked in oils, I worked in watercolors, I worked in acrylics, I drew. And so we came down here and we lived piece of land on the riverfront, and there were lots of flowers, wildflowers, and so I noticed the flowers, and I started doing studies of wildflowers in watercolor, mm -hmm. and 
it just kind of went from there. And one of the interesting things for me is when I started doing paintings with flowers, I worked from a lot. And I you can only work pretty small because I'm outside sitting on the ground or whatever. Um, but I started painting the flowers and I did them in watercolor and I, I really hadn't worked that much in watercolor. And it seemed the perfect media for the flowers. And what I soon realized after a couple of years, I was really good at it. And one of the reasons was the skills that I had learned in that horrible production work for Hallmark Cards when I was 19, those skills were there. So I knew how to, I knew how to use watercolors, how to control it, how to make it work or whatever. And it just all and came they, together. And it all came together. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I wonder, before we go looking at some of your artwork, I wonder if you could tell me the story of the butterfly. Oh, I will be delighted to tell you this. There, it gives me goosebumps. Um, every year, for years, I've gone to a place called Wild Acres up near Little Switzerland for re artists' retreats, or artists, writers, musicians, all kinds of people come. And what I always do when I, in the spring and in the fall, it's a week long, and you have your meals, you don't have to do anything but what you want to do. So I've been going there since 2007. And so this, I guess it was 2016, I was there, and I always walk the mountain trails to see what's blooming, or if it's in the fall, you know, I, I, I see what nature is doing. And then, then something will come to me that I will work from. To just wait for something to speak to you. To speak to me. Sure. And so this, it was in the April, the middle of April. It was, it was cold. It was dreary. It was rainy. And so I'm there. I think it was Monday, Monday that we checked in. So Tuesday, I was walking in the woodlands and getting back near the studio, and I saw this fluttering in the grass, and it was misty and it was rainy, and there was this fluttery movement, and so I went over. And it was a black swallowtail butterfly there in the grass. But misty and dewy, so was it having trouble flying? I don't know. But it was, it was just fluttering, yeah. so he wouldn't you know, it. So, so of course I bit down and said, well, hey there. Hey, right? where are you? Hi. And so I got a stick, and I, and I put it next to him, and he crawled on the stick, on the end of the stick, twig. And so that surprised me. So, oh, well, goodness. And so I put my finger next to that, and so he crawled on my finger. And so then he went back, and so we did, we did that, you know, for a little bit. Which is amazing. Which is itself. amazing. Yes. And so then, Doug, so he's on my finger, and he, he crawled down my finger, up my hand, up my arm, across my shoulder, across my neck, and I felt him walking across my face, Lord, and he disappeared. Me. So there I sat in this mist, and, and I don't know where the butterfly's gone. I, had, I didn't see him flying. But I happened, I didn't normally do it, but I had my phone with me. There's no cell service there. I'm like, oh, right, right. There, right. right. It. So I got my phone out and I put it on camera. And, it, and he, was, he was on top of my head with his wings spread like he was in the sun. Oh, my gosh. And he stayed. And so I sat there, <laughs> sat there and by myself. And so finally, the mist was getting a little heavier. And so I very slowly and carefully got up. Walked down the path, walked down the steps, walked in the door of the studio, walked over to where my table, drawing table was, and I had a big bouquet of flowers. And so, put my finger up, he got on my finger, I put him on the flowers. Unbelievable. And he stayed. The whole time, the whole walk, the whole, and then sat on the flowers in your studio for how long? For, it was Tuesday when I, Tuesday afternoon when I took him in there. He was in there all week. I did paintings of him. I took photographs of him. He would fly around a bit, and it, then he would be there on the flowers. I took one day, it was sunny and warm. That was on a Thursday, I think. I took him outside, and I put him on the side of the building in the sun, and I thought he would fly away. But later in the afternoon, it became cloudy, and it was getting colder, and he was on the ground. My finger, and he went back inside, put him back on the flowers, so he stayed. And then Sunday, it was time to leave, and it was cold and 
raining. And I, I couldn't wait it. Rain! So I bundled up the bouquet with him on it and put it in a big basket and then put a loose um, plastic bag around it and set it on the seat next to me and I drove home. And you took him home with you? I'm in the car. Four hours. Oh my and gosh! And he was fine. So John wasn't really surprised. So I brought him out here. And had some flowers, obviously a bouquet of flowers. Wild mustard was blooming, so I could gather that. Um, the nurseries had lantana, they love lantana, so I got flowers and things and I put in here. So he stayed in here, so I gave him one. And I'd come out, every day I'd come out, you know, and he'd be in here. And so it was about, so that was Sunday, after I found him on Tuesday. Right. So on Thursday, it was, a pretty day, and I told John, I said, well, maybe I should take him outside and, and let him go. And so John said, well, he says, we didn't know how long he was going to live, and he says, it's supposed to turn off cold tonight, so maybe you should just keep him in the Wait studio. Wait one day. Wait, you know, and so I did. So that was Thursday. Friday, you know, he was moving a little bit slower. You know, he was, he was out here, and he'd flutter around, and I'd sit and work, and then I'd feel him on my foot. <laughs> And so then Saturday morning I came out and he was on the flowers, but he was moving. I kind of moved him a little bit. He was moving very slowly. And I went out to gather more wild mustard. So early in the afternoon I came back in and he was on the floor. Oh. So he was a pipe vine swallowtail. And they um, lived from probably... 10 days to two weeks, and I had him 12 days. Almost the whole time. That's amazing. And for him to just be so calm and, and just spread out on your head like that, and, oh, my heart and is so fuzzy. So, and it was so, I mean, it was it's a very moving. It, it was very moving, and, and he was right up. There's, I took a bunch of pictures and things. So, yeah. um, so he, he was on the floor there, and so I... Um, you know, I wasn't surprised, but amazing how how much you got close to him, huh? It was. Yeah. What was amazing was, to me, was when I would come into my studio after that, it felt empty. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It felt empty. Um, what an amazing story, though. That, that gift that you know you would. Some people would maybe just think that, oh, it's just an insect, it's just a butterfly, but that is a moving story. That is just like, almost like there was an angelic guardian angel kind of aspect to it. there was. Yeah. And I, um, you know, it was so, it was so moving for me. Oh, and about a month after that, though, it was funny, I was in the house where he's already been, and John was outside, and he says, I've been there, he says, you've got to come out here. He says, there's a butterfly out here and it won't leave. <laughs> so I went out and it was a black swallowtail, but it couldn't have been a, a relative. Or right, anything. he didn't have time to do any kind of mating or whatever. No, out there. He, no. he was never, he, you know, he oh, was never oh, out. Right, right. <clears throat> and so I went out and it flew right down in front of me on the porch. And so I started I got and then it, then it flew out on the walk and so I walked out there and I could see, I, I was close enough that I could see that he, he was probably an older butterfly because one of his wings was a little bit damaged. And he flew off and I never saw him again. But it was just like the first one coming to say, I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. Yes. yes. And blessed. Absolutely. So I, um, that Christmas, I um, used one of the photographs and created a Christmas card with his image on it. And then I then in a, in a letter with the card, I told the story and I said it was a miracle. And Christmas is a time of miracles. Absolutely. And so I did that and then I thought, I want to do something with this. I want to make a gift. So I applied for a residency at Wild Mustards to come and spend a week and work on it. So I was awarded the residency. So in August then of that year, I went back to Wild Acres and I took all my photographs, I took the things I'd written, I took um, my paintings that I had done, 
And I also had taken my butterfly to uh, Brian Grawl, who does the framing, and Brian put him in a little shadow box kind of Oh, frame. so you saw him? I took him to Wild Acres with me, yeah. where he came from. Okay. And so I took him and I had him there with me in my little cabin when I was working. And then when I left, I left him in that. Because that way he was home. And so then I had the, I had the book laid out. I, I wrote it. And illustrated it and yourself? illustrated it. And I had Wonderful. it all laid out. And then I had to get it published. And I didn't know how to do that. And so a friend of mine had done a book on a website called Blurb. Where you create your own book. And you input all of your materials, your art, your photographs, your writings, whatever. So you don't necessarily have to have a publisher. No, so they you do it yourself. You do it yourself and then and then they print it and you you know you buy it from them. So I thought I can I can do that. Right. And so that's what I did. And it's very expensive to do, but I did it. I wanted to and so so I Maybe. And do you have the book here today? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would love to see it. <clears throat> My Butterfly, A Love Story. Oh, and I'm going to get a little closer in a minute so you can see this. And there's Look a... Look how pretty. Oh, beautiful. The black with blue represents our grandfather and our family. Really? And, yeah, so my, our grandmother is the monarch, and then I have Cousin Lock. that's the yellow. Like the butter colored butterfly. Mm -hmm. So to us, so they are really guardian angels of people we have lost. So that's, that actually, this is an illustration that I did. Um, actually, I did it from the photograph I took on my phone of him with his This is a painting. That's you a painting. painted this. Yeah, and actually, it was about five by seven. I reduced it down sure. and used it. Uh, so I can read this first. This kind Please of Please do, yes. yes. Okay. I fell in love with a butterfly. It was an unusual romance and completely unexpected. Have you ever tried to catch a butterfly in your hands or place your finger near it? They fly away immediately. Reason tells me it's not possible, but my butterfly did not fly away. He stayed with me. That's so bad. Okay. Oh, okay. I can show that. That's the photo. Oh, your hand. That's when I found him on my head. Yeah. So, so, so everything in here, I typed in, you know, the fonts, everything right. is mine. And so pictures of him on the, on the floor? This is in the studio. I'm so blessed you shared that with us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking. We're going to take a break here and um, regroup, and we're going to start showing you some of Jenny's artwork, and she can tell us about those. So stand by. So this painting is a watercolor. And it's of a leaf on a grapevine at Kern Creek Vineyards. I was out there in the vines and I was I was really attracted to the leaves with all the holes for yeah, the insects. Exactly. And so I did a study of one of the leaves and I call it vintage lace. It does look very lacy. It does. Yeah, it's like beautiful. Lace. So I thought vintage, you know, like this for, is the vineyard, good vintage, for the vineyard. Right. Vintage lace. And I do anything that I paint. I'm really drawn a lot to, as I say, wildflowers and that kind the of the nature thing. aspect. And I don't want perfect things. Sure. You know, so um, so that's uh, that that's the story of that painting. And I, I I think I mentioned this in the uh, art makers interview how most people would look at that and just walk by and say, well, that leaf has been ruined, you know. And okay. for you to really, the artist has to see it. That's right. For it to become a beautiful Maybe. piece. So you've got to have the vision to see it and then the, the skill to put it on paper like that or in canvas. It's absolutely amazing to me. <laughs> well, and one of the, you know, when I was talking about the skills that I developed yeah. at Hallmark, that is completely reflected in there. I don't even draw first. I'm so comfortable with a brush. And that you can do it without having that, to sketch and, it first. Right. And wow. I start really light with really light color and then build up and the very last parts that I put in are the really dark dark parts. I see so you can go in and people think with watercolor you hear people say we well, can't change anything once it's done it's 
See, that's not so. You can. You, you can, can layer it. it. You can layer it. I see. You can lift out, you know, with clear water and, and let it dry and then go back in and make changes to it. And then here, let's see, I always see, I think there's a little heart in there somewhere. I know there is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there always is. You know, there's always a little heart. So. That's just amazing. The detail that you can draw out of it is just awesome. All right, let's move on to your next one. Okay. for a, Let's go to this one, another watercolor painting. This is a, um, a wild magnolia. I can almost smell it. Don't they yeah. smell yummy? The wild ones have some smell. The wild, have you ever seen the wild ones? Mm -mm. Oh, not, and not growing, no. They, the trees are really tall, and the limbs are usually way up high where you can't get to them. And they lose their leaves, unlike the ones you know that you have in your yards. The wild ones lose their leaves in the fall, and then they grow new ones. And hmm. the flowers are like this big. Wow. So I happened to be on the Blue Ridge Parkway up on the top of a ridge, so I was at kind of treetop level. Sure. And, and so I was able to, to get see one it. of these. Nice. And, and take it. And I don't normally pick the, the flowers. You know, I like to leave them where they are. But this time I did. And I brought it home with me. And it, it lasted for about a week. So I did this study. And again, you'll notice on here, you'll see that there's some little places in the leaves. You know, that aren't perfect. That aren't perfect. But I... Uh, I loved it. I love that painting. Um, Absolutely. I'm liking all the shading. And again, I start really light, and you can kind of see on here somehow some places are really light. Yeah. Build up, and then these very dark places, and that's what that's what makes um, makes the images what I call pop. You know, it sure to get that last detail on the end, and it's just little bitty things yeah. here and there. It's yeah. Yeah. Tell us about someone other. Okay. This for a change of pace. Okay. This this I did from my... Don't uh, forget to stretch. <laughs> yeah. It was my, my next door neighbor who leads an exercise class. A lot oh, of people go to it. She nice. didn't, I had my phone. She didn't know. I she doesn't know. She hasn't seen this. <laughs> and I had my phone in, so I took her picture, and then I've done that, and I gave it to her. Oh. So that's watercolor, too. That's awesome. Again, you can tell there are lighter spots, so you've probably like come back and darkened and darkened right, until and darkened you come up and then maybe do some of these, yeah, some lines, of these lines and lines this here. Yeah. at the end. Right. I see. So this is just to show you I can do things other than... Sure, other than you, nature. Other than, yeah. Here are two of the butterfly ones from yeah. her story. So these are actually illustrations in the book, and this one says, My butterfly sleeps... Wings folded, grasping a stem, hanging upside down. And he did. I, that, that, I actually did that from him. That was how he slept. Out. That was yeah. how, and that's how they sleep. And this one, this one to me is special because, again, that was at Wild Acres there in the big bouquet. And I felt like he was um, watching me because he stayed the whole time and he's, you know, he's there, and I thought, watching I thought me he's, work. he's watching me work. Right. And what I wrote on that one was, uh, this was a quote from the book, and it was, How could one small, silent creature fill a room with his gentle presence? Oh, that gives me chills. Just beautiful, Jenny. Thank you. Wonderful. Tell us about this one. This one is a, for a change of pace. This is an acrylic. And this is a plein air painting that I did over over near the blacksmith shop in folk school. In the field across the street, there's a pond okay. tucked away back there. So that was one probably July day in the morning out in the pond and painted that really. Uh, I love uh, the reflections on the on the water. I did too. I, I love the colors. I love yeah. these. I love you know it's. You can see the sky and the, you can see the sky and the trees and behind it. Just beautiful. How long have you been painting now? <laughs> How old am I? <laughs> oh no, right? Because you were inside. What's this moment here? Oh, this was an. This is an interesting. This was an experiment. This is also watercolor. Okay. But this, the paper is called Upo, and it's not paper like um, cotton, you know, or rag or whatever. It's basically petroleum, plastic, slick. Wow. You know, and I don't like it, but I was 
fooling with it, you know, just to see. And so it's watercolor. And so actually what I did was there was, a, I saw a painting by probably, mm, probably not, probably Manet. Manet did some street scenes in Paris. So, so I, that was my inspiration. And I was just trying to see what that, how, how that, to get the paint to flow on that slick right. surface. So you can see it's a completely different. Sure. But I, I like that. I haven't done any more. It turned out beautiful. I like the looseness of it and the yeah, it's not so defined in the hard lines. Yeah, kind of softer. And you get the feeling of the wet streets. Sure. There. So. Wow, that's amazing. Um, let's see what else do I have. Oh, I have another one. Let's see. This is a this is a painting here. I've got uh, one painting. of your kitties. That's of Cullen. He's passed away, but I loved him so much, and that's actually from a photograph. I did it after he after he passed. He looks mighty comfy. He was comfortable. He was snug on the bed. This is actually, I scan all my paintings and then I can print them out. So that's another one. That's a study I did of Colin. Same, After same kitty. Passed. Yeah. And that was, that was, I did that one first. But when I did this one, you know, I was really heartbroken. And, but when I did it, I, all of a sudden it, it felt like he was looking at His right eyes, back. yeah. Look at he that. He was looking right Let's back zoom in on at me. I've got the original Look at those in. eyes. I've got oh, the original inside. But, um, oh, that's amazing. You can so see was, his expression. It was really comforting. I, I right. did four or five paintings of him right. a couple of weeks after he left. Oh, so he's never really gone. No. And this might be interesting because this is something in progress. This Ooh. Is, so this is from a rooster out at Crane Creek named Beta, beautiful black rooster, and I got one of his feathers. And so I was working on a study from that. That's Just, amazing how it almost looks so, you can see the fuzzy, how soft. It's, you know, it's all light and shadows. And, right. You know, smoke and mirrors. <laughs> but when you use um, wet on wet, is where you use wet paper and wet paint, okay. then you can get these soft areas and soften them out because I thought the reason I started trying to do feathers was I thought I wonder how you can get that <laughs> you know yeah I wonder how that can work but you can you can see it's it's just looking at the light and shadow just amazing talented lady so people often ask me you know do you sell your work how do you you know how do you sell it and that kind of thing so the answer is I spent most of my life in the corporate world in business I know how to do business. Painting and art is a whole different thing. And it takes a lot of energy and time to market your work. And I'm not very good at that. I don't want to spend my time doing that. Um, and so what I wind up doing, and I do sell my work. And I do, I've got some, I've got some over in the folk school. I have some cards and I have them at the Bascom. And I also have them at the Appalachian Center for Crafts. But mostly what I do with my work is I use it to support organizations that are important to me. Such as I'll donate books or I'll donate paintings or I'll donate something to... Uh, I used to be on the Plant Preservation Committee with the Georgia Mountain Research and Education Center That's because cool. they're working to preserve the native plants. Nice. And this area that we live in is so unique. It's like a rainforest. I mean, there, it, the diversity, the of diversity the, yeah. is, is just amazing. So, so that's... So you donate your work to organizations that are non-for-profit right. and that they can turn around and sell it and, and, and subsidize their income to right. keep going and right. serving others. Right. That's amazing. That's yeah. very selfless and... Plus, it gets your name out there, too, I mean, and you know that somebody will be enjoying your paintings down the road, you know? Yeah. It, that's amazing. Um, if you have seen anything you like here today that you're interested in, you can email Miss Ginny at... At Yurani, U-R-A-N-I-V, for Virginia, at Frontier.com. Yurani V at Frontier.com. So, U-R-A-N-I-V at Frontier.com. And the books I sell mm -hmm. for $25 if you buy them directly from me. And the same email for that? The same email for that. 
And I and the I, name of the book was My Butterfly, my, A Love Story. A Love Story. And I did have my, my son, John's son, um, set up a website for me. Okay. So I've got a website, and you can buy them on the website. And that's it. I've got the book, and then I've got cards that Trains go with it. Cards. Okay. Cards. And on the website, they are $35. But that's... To counteract the cost of... Right, it's an extended free and shipping, shipping, okay. shipping, and I package it up nicely, sure. you know, and they're So if, they, if they come directly to your email, they can get at a discounted price. If they go to the website, which, what is the website address? It's Bo's Crossing. Um, B-E-A-U? B-E-A-U-S-C-R-O-S-S-I-N-G dot com. Bo's Crossing dot com for the website. Jenny, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful part of your life and the beautiful butterfly story. I cannot wait till my mom sees this. Um, I want to remind y'all, unfortunately, Ginny will not be at the festival in a week and a half because she's doing an auction for the kids' um, artwork from the Art Makers, uh, from Fort Henry's Baptist Church, where we did the Art Makers program this year. And so she will not be at the festival, but I will. And I hope to see you all there. Again, it's Clay County Historical and Arts Council's 42nd annual festival Yay. on the square. The Friday night street dance starts at 7 p.m. and then Saturday from 10 to 5 and Sunday from 10 to 4. We really hope to see you all there. Right, because I'd always wanted, I mean, I painted in little tiny kitchens with my easel in front of the refrigerator. Right. Over here. So when we built the studio, I didn't know what to do. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I never had a studio. And so uh, there was a book published about artist studios. And so I got that and I read it. And these guys go out and they start painting at 8 in the morning. And then they break and then they do this and do that. And so they got this regular routine. And I could never do that. And not only that, I made it like um, a place to work. And so about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I started thinking about it. I said, and I love being in here. It's, and I don't, very let, peaceful. And I don't let people come up here. So. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for this. I don't because, because it's so special to me. I mean, and it's I, your own I personal do, energy and, I do and let, creativity. And I do let people come in, but I'm very choosy about sure. it to come in. So uh, it was about a year and a half ago. I was thinking about it and I wasn't out here much. And you know, I'm, it was just kind of a hard time. And then I thought, I think I need some whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I start, so I bought this chaste lounge. I yes, bought this. It's beautiful. I got Very these comfy. pillows. Um, I had that little clock up there with the squirrel on it. Well, I need a battery for it. Um, Sa Sandy Webster, who's an incredible artist, she gave me that. But I didn't know it was going to go in my studio. She was just getting rid of it. Really? And then I got these lace curtains. Very cute. And so... And then I've got over here, there's my dad. I mean, everything in here now is it's more tied to you. More tied yeah. to me and more um, not geared toward producing art. Sure. It's in a comfortable space where you can. Where I can. Yeah. But, you know, but where I can relax and, and just, uh, and you know, I've got woods all around me. I mean, sure. any, any place that you look in, right. you can see trees. But that, that was, I'm really glad that I did that because it feels... A little more on or more on your mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a really comfortable place. I'm telling you, like she said, you can't look anywhere without seeing all the woods. <laughs> this is a gorgeous place. And my friend, one of the things I've done for the last two years is I have a friend in Kansas City. Her name is Jenny. We both work for IBM. And her husband has Parkinson's and she's oh. the caregiver. So two or three years ago, we she called one day and I couldn't talk to her and so I was busy and so anyway I said, why don't we have a happy hour once a week and we can we can talk during that time and that way I'll have that time set aside and you know we can just sure get get some wine and so right. so we started we started doing that so. That's why when I redid it, I've got my little teapot over there. Yeah, I've got my ice nice. there. I've got, nice. my, you know, 
And, and in today's world, and everyone is so go, 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 and it's all technology, right. it's wonderful to unplug, especially with your close friends. So yeah. be, be sure to do that, you know, get out into nature, maybe take your shoes and socks off, put your feet <laughs> yeah. in the grass, connect with Mother Earth. But uh, this has been a wonderful, wonderful interview, Cindy, and oh, I really am yes, thankful, thank very you. thankful for you letting us come in here and invade your space, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So... Again, folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you at the next Sort of Spotlight. If you guys are interested, please don't hesitate to email me at cchackaysville, that's H-A-Y-E-S-V-I-L-L-E, at outlook.com. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.